Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In past few video tutorials, we had seen how to uh, configure a Spring using Java based configuration file. So in this video, I am going to discuss about the how to receive lifecycle callbacks method. Right, callbacks. So bins created in a in a at the rate configuration annotated class supports the regular lifecycle callbacks. Any classes defined with the at the rate bean annotation can use uh, the at the rate post construct or at the rate pre destroy annotations from the JSR 250. So, if you follow my uh, past video tutorials, then we had discussed about the what is post construct pre destroy, and this is a JSR 250 annotations. And there is one more annotation at the rate resource which belongs to the JSR 250 annotations. So, life cycle callback methods you can annotate at the rate post construct or at the rate pre destroy annotations and these annotations basically uh, comes with the jdk itself so this is not uh, a spring specific annotations right so the regular spring lifecycle callbacks are fully supported as well if uh, a spring implements initializing bin uh, or disposable bin or lifecycle their respective methods are called by the container right so suppose if you have uh, any java class which implements in a slicing bin and disposable bin then corresponding life cycle method will have to uh, override like in a slicing bin contains some method is called uh, after property set and disposable bin uh, has a callback method is called destroy so these two methods you can override in your uh, java class and that class you can register in the spring container right then then uh, after property set and destroy method will be called at automatically right so these things already i had discussed in the past video tutorials now the at the rate bean annotation supports uh, a specifying arbitrary initialization and destruction callback methods much like uh, a spring xml init method and destroy method attributes to the bean element right so here suppose you have a class is called foo and foo contains a method is called init right and here you are doing initialization logic initialization kind of work like taking connection from the database or reading some property uh, from the file uh, property file etc and uh, we have a method is called bar which is a cleanup method uh, which is basically responsible to basically do some house uh, household cleanup operations like uh, once you uh, use some resources and uh, finally you want to close that resources then those kind of uh, stuff you can write here uh, in cleanup method and you can give the event destroy method name as a destroy as well now here we have a configuration file right so our class is called add config which is annotated with at the rate configuration means this basically is a configuration file which is almost analogous to the uh, spring xml file and here we have created a method is called foo uh, which returns the foo kind of object and this object explicitly we are returning over here so basically what uh, happen a spring will create an instance of foo and that will register into the spring container with the method name whatever method name you have given if you want the specific name then here you need to along with that that is bean you can specify the method uh, bean name as well so at the rate bean uh, is having lot of attributes one of the attribute is called init method name here you can specify the init method so basically uh, here you can see in class foo we have an init method this will be called automatically right so and uh, again we have created another method is called bar and which returns the bar kind of instance so here bar instance we have created so basically this instance will be uh, uh, kept into the spring container by this id whatever is the method name right and here uh, bean is having another attribute is called destroy method name and here we method name we have given the cleanup so cleanup method will be called automatically right now in the case of foo above right here you can see in the case uh, foo above foo is uh, having a init method so it would be equally as valid to call the init method directly during the const uh, const uh, construction so here what you have done uh, in configuration file a uh, method which is annotated with that bean and we have created a foo instance and uh, 
this instance you have kept in the local variable is called foo and explicitly you can call foo dot init that is also valid right uh, if you do not call explicitly then what we will have to do uh, at the rate bin is having a attribute which is called destroy method uh, sorry uh, init method name and you can specify this method name then that will be called by the container and if you want to call it explicitly that of course you can do that now how we can specify a bean scope using uh, a spring java based configuration so using at the rate scope annotation you can specify that your beans defined with the at the rate bean annotation should have a specific scope the default scope is singleton so if you do not specify any scope of the a spring bean then default scope would be singleton but you can override this with the at the rate scope annotation right so here here uh, uh, in configuration class so my configuration is a configuration uh, configuration class which is annotated with at the rate configuration and we have a method uh, encryptor which returns the type of encryptor and here bas basically you can create an instance of encryptor and you can return it and this method basically annotated at the rate of bin so instance of encryptor will be uh, register in the uh, spring container with this method name right if you do not uh, specify any name and here uh, before this method you can even specify the uh, scope the uh, scope of this class object right so by default you do not uh, specify any uh, scope then singleton would be the uh, scope if you want to override that uh, scope then of course you can uh, specify a scope as prototype so if you are if you are dealing with the core spring container then you have a two types of a scope singleton and prototype but the but you are dealing with the spring web based application then you might have a, uh, a scope like request session and application so that's all i have in this video tutorial guys so in next video tutorial whatever we have discussed in this video slide we are will uh, go to see we are going to see practical example of uh, whatever we, we have discussed in the video slides so thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial